said that um, his love can never fail. Good morning to everybody and for those of you that are in our church for the first time, you are indeed welcome. We're getting ready to sing praises to the Lord uh, from CGS number 24. While we get ready, we just want to welcome all of you that are watching us over the internet. This is the Apostolic Faith Mission, the branch in Penham Road in Peckham. If you are quite close by, you've only missed the introduction, you can still worship with us today if you wish. We're just starting the devotional service now. But otherwise, um, the, the website that you're watching, there should be a contact detail. You can get in touch through there. And then in the evening, this evening, we will have a service at 5 p.m. and you're quite, quite encouraged to attend. Um, we want to sing praises to the Lord starting from CGS number 24. Our song leader this morning is Anu Shodipe.
SSNS 710, SSNS 710. As we sing this heart, um, let us look to God and ask him for mercy to help us not to, uh, not to murmur, but to wait on the coming of the Lord. Let's sing seven, SSNS 710, only the first two verses. SSNS 710, verses 1 and 2. after this life. Let's sing um, chorus 37, CGS chorus 37. We are pressing toward the land of Canaan. We'll sing this chorus twice. sing our next song which is SSNS 707 SSNS 707 dare to be a Daniel we'll sing just the first and second verse of SSNS 707 
last song before prayer will be SSNS 1014, SSNS 1014. We'll sing verses 1, 2, and the last. The last song, um, the last verse we'll sing standing up when we led in prayer. Let's have the orchestra join us for the last verse. Um, verses 1, 2, and the last. Heavenly Father, because deliverance is here. Yes. Deliverance has come. Yes. We thank you, Jesus. Yes. We thank you for dying for us on the cross. Yes. We are here for deliverance. Yes. Take each and every soul, Heavenly Father. Yes. Each and every heart, Heavenly Father. Yes. We have come as we are. Yes. Without one plea. We need you, Jesus. Save souls. Sanctify souls. Baptize with the Holy Spirit. Heal, Father God. By your stripes, Jesus, we are healed. We thank you. We thank you because you are able to do this. Look at each and every heart, Heavenly Father. You know the hidden needs we have. Touch each heart. Touch each heart. Father God, we want to go home having been touched by you. Touch us, Heavenly Father. We thank you and we ask knowing that Jesus, you are here. The Holy Spirit is here. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
Bible reading is taken from Hebrews chapter 12, reading from verse 22 to 25, Hebrews chapter 12, beginning from verse 22, verse 22, but ye are come unto Mount Zion, and unto the city of the living God the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to God the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and the blood of sprinkling, that speaketh better things than that of Abel. 25, the last. See that ye refuse not him that speaketh. For if there escaped not, who refused him that spake on earth, much more shall not we escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven. Father, 
watches over me. I trust in God. I know He cares for me. On mountain bleak, or on a storming sea. Our Heavenly Father watches over us. We are going to make Mount Zion. Please open with me to Revelation chapter 21. I want to read a few verses from there. Revelation chapter 21 from verse 7. <clears throat> inherit all things and I will be his God and he shall be my son verse 22 and I saw no temple therein for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it and the city had no need of the sun neither of the moon to shine in it for the glory of God did lighten it and the Lamb is the light thereof verse 24 and the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it. And the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. And they shall, by, and they shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth. That's verse 27 I'm reading. Neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. Mount Zion, the pinnacle of the Christian experience from salvation. We glorify and thank God for his unspeakable gift. His gift of that plan of redemption. That songwriter says, oh, the love that drew salvation's plan. Oh, the grace that brought it down, right from heaven, down to man. Oh, the mighty gulf that God himself did span at Calvary because of you and me. May God help us to appreciate what he has done for us. Mount Zion, the pinnacle, the end of it all. God's unspeakable gift, his plan of redemption, this gospel that he has given to us, salvation, eternal life with God at Mount Zion. John 14, 1 to 3 tells us, let not your heart be troubled. You know, nowadays there are so many things that easily can trouble. If it's not the news, then it could be the finances. If it's not the finances, then it could be the atmosphere locally around. If it's not the, 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 the issue of things going, there's always one thing or another to give a reason for fear. But Jesus Christ says, let not your heart be troubled. Amen. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, if you were wasting your time, if you're going and coming and trying to serve me is absolutely useless. If it will amount to a waste of time, Jesus Christ says, I would have told you. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And it doesn't end there. Verse 3 says, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. I will come again and receive you 
unto myself, that where I am, there you might be also. Amen. You know, it is amazing to think back and ponder that for over 2,000 years, Jesus Christ has still been preparing that place. Yes. If you think that it took him six days to create the miracle of creation that we know as of now, take a plant, take an animal, whatever it is, six days, and yet Jesus said he goes to prepare a place for you and me if we will serve him and that he has gone and he is coming back again and he's been on the job for over 2,000 years. Well, no one does. 1 Corinthians 2.9 tells us that I have not seen, ear have not heard. In fact, it has not entered into the heart of man that those things which God has prepared for them that love him. You know, when we're talking of Mount Zion, in that, uh, the text that was read to us in the Bible reading this morning, it goes beyond this earth. It goes beyond even the rapture. It goes beyond and through the marriage supper of the Lamb. It goes beyond Armageddon. It goes beyond the millennial reign. It goes through beyond Gog, the battle of Gog and Magog. It goes beyond the white throne judgment. It goes, surpasses hell. Goes through beyond even this current heaven and earth into the new heaven and new earth. Amen. Not only that, it goes directly into the new Jerusalem. Amen. That is what we're talking about. Yeah. That is the end of it all. Yeah. That is what you've been coming in and going out. That's the end, and may you not miss it. Amen. The city of God. You know, anything that is going to be of quality, anything that is worth anything, you're going to pay a price for it. You remember that? Yeah. So when we are now saved from sin, we need to remember that, and we must realize that despite our current situation that looks so never-ending, but yet it is very fleeting, very transient, very, you know, the Bible says it came to pass. It has only come to pass. It is, it is not abiding at all. The Bible tells us we have here no abiding city. There is no abiding city here. Whether you're enjoying life or you're enduring life. Huh? You know, some people are right now enjoying. Some are they, they, they actually praying to die. They're enduring life. But Jesus Christ is telling us here that whether you have, life is good, you call it good, or bad, whether you're enjoying or enduring, we must not forget that on this road to salvation, we're still on the way. We have not reached Mount Zion yet. We have not got there yet. And because we've not got there, we've got to also remember that once upon a time, we were delivered from bondage. We were delivered from sin and Satan. Because if we ever forget that, if we don't keep that in our remembrance, the devil will trip you up. The devil will trip me up. Remember what I said? What is going to be of any worth? It's going to cost you something. This Mount Zion, it goes beyond what can be described. And you better be sure that if you intend to get there, don't expect it to be an easy journey. But by the special grace of God, Amen. I have the witness of God in my soul. Amen. That if God wishes you to live in the very pit of hell while you're on this earth, he will give you the grace to stand. Amen. If God can keep a teenager in secondary school, I can tell you assuredly, there is no way God cannot keep somebody. Yes? If God can keep a young person, I can assure you and I can encourage you, Jesus can keep you. Amen. So, if we remember that, that we were delivered when we had no strength, when we had no way out, just like the children of Israel when they were in Egypt, there was no way out. They were in bondage. Whatever it was that they were, they, they, they were forced to do was what they had to do. It was the same in our situation concerning sin and Satan. And God ha, 
has delivered us. Yes. We are now marching towards Zion. Yes. We are now heading towards Zion. Yes. But remember, we've not arrived home yet. Yes. We have not arrived home yet. Yes. So, whatever you're going through, brother, sister, be encouraged. Yes. It is only for a while. Yes. I say, I repeat, whatever you're going through now, whether they be disappointments, whether they be tough times, that songwriter says, some through the water, some through the flood, some through the fire. But whichever way, all will go through the blood. And as long as you're going through the blood, victory is sure for you. May God help you to continue. No matter what your current situation, please remember, it is transient. What is transient? It is here now, it's gone tomorrow. What is transient? That thing that does not abide forever. Whatever you're going through now, actually, if you would really think about it, you will realize that it is irrelevant. It is irrelevant with perspective mm -hmm. to that big That's eternal right. picture. Oh, yeah. That big eternal view. Yes. Oh, may Jesus Christ encourage you. Yes. Because on this side of life, there may be things we may need to shed. Yeah? You know, a business, when they want to streamline and focus on their goal, they call it their priority. They'll begin to shed. Maybe they were involved in five things. They begin to cut. No, we don't need number one anymore. Let's sell that off. Number three, is it actually, does it focus, does it help us to get to where we're going? That's where we're going. Is it going to help us? No, let's cut it off. Somebody looking from the outside will be wondering, how can you do that? You're making money from it. This and that is very good. But because they have a focus. They know where they're going. Yeah. They shed it. Brother, sister, there will be things me and you will have to shed this side of life. Yeah. There are things me and you will have to lose. It's not very nice to lose things. But because <laughs> there is a purpose. Yeah. There is a focus. Yeah. Are you focused this morning? May God give you his focus. Yeah. Yes, there may be some things you might need to lose for now to gain that eternal goal. And the only thing that is going to help you is that faith in Jesus Christ that has believed his word that said, I go to prepare a place for you. Yeah. And, if I have, and if I go, and by the way, he has gone. Yes. He said, if I go, I will come again, yes. not just for show, I will come again and receive you unto myself. May God give you faith to believe him. That faith will cause you to consecrate and allow God to cut out and shed out those things that will not help you to focus. May God help us. If we don't do that, if we don't focus on God, if we don't allow God to, to streamline us, streamline us in our focus, Streamline us in our efforts. Streamline us even in terms of our life. And this thing I'm talking about will touch your life. Every aspect of your life. It will touch your style. Oh yes, it will. Because you're focused. It will touch your lifestyle. It will touch your hairstyle. It will touch, it will touch your dress style. Your groom style. Your whatever style. It will touch it. Yeah. Because you have a focus. Yeah. Have you lost your focus? Could that be why there's so many strange things going on in your life? May God give you focus this morning. Yeah. Otherwise, we will allow this life <laughs> to cause us to draw back from God. God forbid. Amen. Hebrews 10, 38 tells us what God thinks of them that draw back. If any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. Have you ever heard your father 
tell you, my son, my daughter, I'm disappointed. You know, sometimes that thing can be worse than punishment. But here God is saying, if any man, if any woman, he that has put his hand to the plow and is looking back, Luke 9.62 says, they're not fit. God here is saying, if any man draw back, my soul will have no pleasure in him. May God have pleasure in you. May God have pleasure in me. These current life situations and what we're going through, it's incomparable with what God has in store for us. <laughs> and some of us have been through a few things. But God is saying, 2 Corinthians 4.17, open with me. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment. Didn't I tell you it was transient? Which is but for a moment. Worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. <laughs> May you not come short of that glory. Amen. May I not come short of that glory. Amen. When we read in Revelation 21, 7, told us that he that overcometh shall inherit all things. Amen. He that overcometh. <laughs> That, you know, those words, they have an implication. It implies there was a struggle. It implies a choice had to be made. It implied a purpose, a determination had to be there to overcome. When you're talking of overcome, it's not a walk in the park. Let's look at somebody who had a purpose. Just somebody like that. Daniel 1.8. One of my favorite Bible characters. God has blessed me through the life of this young man. Daniel chapter 1 verse 8. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with a portion of the king's meat nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Daniel purposed in his heart. Understand? Not in his head. Not with his mouth, where it mattered most, in his heart. Yeah. You know, friend, you will need a purpose. Yeah. If you don't have a purpose, you're wasting your time. A preacher once said, he that cannot abide by his God-given Bible principles in tough times, he was just wasting time. He was, they were only hobbies. They were not principles. May God lay your hand on principles this morning. Amen. And may you never give up on those God-given principles Amen. that God himself has taught you. Daniel purposed in his heart. At what time? At a time when it was a free-for-all. Enjoy yourself. In fact, you're in the middle of nowhere. Pastor's not around. Mom's not around. Dad's not around. That brother, that sister. So what? Enjoy yourself. It's yours. The choice is yours. Let's take a moment to think about that. You've been taken captive. And you so found favor with your captives. Through God's hand, anyway. You so found favor with your captives. And they now gave you something which, in quotes, was fantastic. Mm. What would you think? <laughs> let's, be, let's be realistic. What would you think? Would you not sit back and say, wow. God, you took us captives. But instead of me being amongst those that were chained and prisoned and other, we're in the palace. We're on scholarship. Free food. Free everything. Wow. Would that not be a natural response? <laughs> but when everything was wow, Daniel purpose in his heart. <laughs> have you got a purpose this morning? Young person, do you have a purpose? Be assured. God, if you will have a purpose, will mark you out for good. Yes. The 
world will see and know that the hand of God is with this person. The Bible tells us of Samuel. He was just a small, small person in the community. But you know, that passage of the Bible said, and God did let none of his words fall to the ground. Do you know what that means? It meant that God was with Samuel so much, and Samuel was with God so much that whatever he said, whatever he prophesied, God would say, I stamp it. Amen. Amen. Young person, forget them. You're on a different level. God is taking you to a different level. May God help you. You choose for God, as he told me. At the age of 14, God said, young man, yeah, I know, you want, you want to enjoy like the, the others are enjoying. You want to enjoy like your friends. Oh, come, 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 come. If you will choose for me, I will see to it that I make you the envy of all these, your friends. Or oh, with my hand on my heart, I can look back to today and say, God, you have not owed me anything. I can look back today and say, God, you have been faithful to your word. Young people, I dare you, try him. Daniel made his choice. It wasn't the one of choice. You know, sometimes when we get revived, then we, we, we get back to, yeah, <coughs> yeah, ah, that's, this is, yeah, this is where I should be. And then maybe give it a few weeks, months. <laughs> I remember when we used to have Youth Week. We'd be so excited. People would be saved in 10s, 20s. But you know, as we come back on the coach, and we're about heading and landing in London, something would just come over you that, oh, God. Am I coming back to this? But you know what? Despite what you may be in or coming back to, you can make a choice. A choice that will count. A choice that God himself will honor. Daniel made his choice. As I said, it wasn't a one-off choice. It was a consistent choice and decision. And you know, that adage says, you make a choice, make a choice, that consistent choice, you will reap a habit. So a habit, you will reap a character. So a character, you will reap a destiny. This one we're talking about is not just destiny here on earth. We're talking of eternal destiny. Have you made your choice? Are you purpose on that choice? Daniel was unashamed in his choice. Don't be ashamed for Jesus. You know, is it not a, is it not a challenge that those who evidently have a wrong teaching, wrong doctrine, wrong religion, many of them killing themselves, blowing themselves up, saying they're going to heaven when the devil is laughing, but they are not ashamed to be identified by their dressing, by their whatever, be they male or female. Are you never challenged as a Christian by that? And are you a dilly Because you want to fit in? May God help. Amen. Choice. You see, when we make our choice for God, it is as it were we are challenging God. You see, when you make a choice to do the wrong thing, you are incurring God's wrath. When you make a choice for God and for his will and his way, you are also incurring God's pleasure. You are challenging God. You are not doing it because you are trying to please God. As in, so, you see, I've been a good boy today. I'm not talking about that. But when you choose, because choice has to do with your free will. When God made us originally, gave us all free will. Till today, God will fold his hands as it were, bind his hands. When it comes to your choice, 
It's your choice. God will not force you. Is it not, <laughs> is it not fearful to think that as we are seated here, God already knows yeah. who's going to make it. As all of us are seated here, do you know that? And all that, who will make that Mount Zion? Who will come short of it? God forbid. Amen. But as we're seated here, God knows already. Yeah. And those, and that is based on choice. Free will choice. God is not going to force you. He's not going to force me. But as I was saying, when we now use that free will to choose for God, we are, as it were, indicting God to say, God, I have done your will. Your word said you're going to bless those that please you. Okay, God, over to you. And you know what? In my own little experience, God has never failed. God has never failed to face a challenge. You will face that challenge and you will see that this is nothing but the hand of God. May God help us. Amen. From the smallest thing, buying that shoe. Do you ever sit back to, to think, this choice I want to make on this shoe, on this outfit, on this whatever it is, is it going to agree with my testimony? Is it in parallel? With my testimony as a child of God. As a Christian. A living witness of my Lord Jesus Christ. Do you ever stop to think that? Is it expedient? You know there's a secret about that word expedient. It is the same root of expedite. Which means to move forward. This choice that I want to make. Is it expedient? Will it move me forward? God cares about and is involved, interested in those little details. You know, is it not Miss Van der Rohe that says God is in the details? That architect, no wonder his buildings and designs were just astonishing. Daniel was a consistent God chooser. Whatever it was, however it was, and you see, that consistency propelled him. From one day to two days, from one week to two weeks, from one month to two months, from one year to two years. You know how long he served? 70 years. And he was consistent. Three different kings from different places. And they stood, every one of them could say, listen, we need Daniel. We need Daniel. Daniel, come. Please, stay with us. We need you. There's something about you. Through different kingdoms. Why? Because Daniel had a purpose. And that verse, Daniel 1.21 tells us, and Daniel continued, even to the first year of King Cyrus. So through changing scenes, through changing kings, kingdoms, situations, Daniel was still faithful in his choosing God and for God, in his purpose. He had a purpose. He had a purpose. Exodus 23.13 tells us that God wants us to be circumspect when it comes to his matter. In other words, <laughs> be diligent to make sure every corner is, is, is as I want you to make it. May God help us on that. <clears throat> Why was Daniel consistent? Why was he purposed? Why was he determined? It was because his heart longed and focused for Mount Zion. What are we talking about Mount Zion? Not only the physical. You know, he knew that sin and idolatry had caused them to be taken out of um, uh, Israel and taken captive. And that one day, according to the word of God, because you see, he was a studier of the word of God. May God make us studiers of his word. Amen. That is when we will know who he is and how he relates. And okay, this thing, he doesn't like this. You know somebody you love, you want to get to know them, isn't it? And you want to get to know what things they like, they don't like. When you read the word of God, you begin to know, okay, God doesn't like this. Okay, this is what he likes. Okay, then you make your choice accordingly. May God help us. Yeah. That's what Daniel did. And he knew that they are going back to the king, get back to that king in land. But beyond that, his heart was seeking for that better city. Let's read Hebrews 10. 
Hebrews 11, 10 and 16. He was one of those. That passage says, For he looked for a city which have foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Can I ask you, have you ever known of a city that has foundations? City, not a house. But this one is built by God himself. 16. Hebrews eleven sixteen. But now they desire a better country. That is unheavenly. Wherefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath prepared for them a city. You see, when you declare for God, God will declare for you. Oh yes, he will. He will. Have you caught focus of Mount Zion? Has God opened your eye to that wonderful reward that he has for those that love him? Have you made up your mind? Are you purposed? Joshua 24, 15 tells us, choose you this day whom you will serve. If you have not yet purposed, this day is yet another day. Yeah. Choose. And he was saying, if after all God has done for you, if after all his deliverance from Egypt, if after all that he has done for you, it still seems evil to you to choose to serve God, then choose. Choose who you want. It's your choice. Hmm. May God help us to choose for him. Don't you feel it's about time that enough of the dilly-dallying, enough of the hot and cold, enough of the yeah, you know, on fire today, cool down tomorrow. The rise and fall, if you don't make up your mind, you see there is a danger. You know what that danger is? The mixed multitude. They were the instigator of any issue, any problem, any murmuring, any complaining. And you know what? People lost their lives in thousands because of them. If you are not focused on heaven, if you are not focused on Mount Zion, you will, you will get sucked up. You cannot escape. You will get sucked up. Because you see, what the mixed multitude cannot stand is the fire of God burning in you. If you are not focused, you cannot have that fire. You see, Exodus 12, 38 tells us, and the mixed multitude went up. Everybody went. And they heard, these people are going. They have, their God has promised them land. Land? Yeah. Houses that they have not built. Wells that they have not digged. Vineyards. Only. Really? And they're going. Well, we too will go. Their God is a good God. Let's go. <laughs> Brother, sister, why are you in the gospel? Are you a benefit scrounge? <laughs> they talk of benefit scroungers. These were the real ones. The mixed multitude. You see, the problem and the reason why they're so dangerous is that their focus never was heaven. Their focus never was Kenya. And because their focus never was Kenya, anything and everything that could go wrong went wrong. You don't want to be there. You do not want to be part of them. <laughs> you know, they had no goal. And you as a student, as a businessman, as a career person, even in the gospel, you know how important having a goal is. If you don't have a goal, will you study to pass your exams? <laughs> if you don't have a goal, will you sit down and you know, put your strategy for your business in order? These people had no goal. They were dangerous. They're what we call bread and butter Christians. They neither loved, served, or were interested in God. And their attitudes proved it. Their attitude proved it. May God help us. Amen. You know what? Such people, they cannot make heaven. You know why they cannot? Because even those who are bent on making heaven. You know what it means to be bent on something? They give you a dirty kick away. You're still coming back. They push you. They do all sorts of things to get. You're still coming back. Are you bent on heaven? You know why? Because 
if you're not really, if you if you're not serious about it, there are too many things to clear you out. The Bible talks that there will be there will become there will come a shaking. When the Bible is talking of a shaking, it's not talking of just physical. There was going to come times, just as when you prepare for your exams, you want to know, your, your, those who are examining you want to know, have you really learned what we've taught you? There's going to come times when you will literally, I mean literally, be picked up, turned upside down, and shaken inside out. By situations, by things that will happen, by disappointments, and don't you ever think that because you're in the house of God, it cannot come from the, from, have you forgotten that? <laughs> We're all human beings. Just as you are a human being. Just as you can disappoint. Guess what? I can disappoint too. So, don't be so <laughs> kicked over, bowled over. I would never have expected that of him or her. Well, it's only Jesus that you can rely on. Yes. Thank you. Brother, yes, you. sister, yes, sir. this heaven business is not a joke. No. You know what? <laughs> um, let's remember that the same heaven we're talking about, the same Mount Zion, it's the same Mount Zion that Peter, John, Paul the Apostle, and all the others that they, are, they also were striving for. Those that I've mentioned, all the apostles of Jesus Christ, there was only one of them, only one that died a natural death. All the others were martyred, mercilessly killed, in fact, when you read the the, 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 the the account, if we have some time, we might be able to get to there. When you read the account of how they were killed, you 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 you, you will you will mm, yeah, you take a deep breath. And it's the same heaven. It's the same Mount Zion. You think you're gonna get there scot free? You think you're going to get there on the, on the cheap? There's, you know, we love bargains, isn't it? <laughs> but heaven, even though it is cheap at any cost, it is not costless. Did you understand that? Yes, sir. There is no amount of cost that it will cost you that is too much to gain heaven, to gain getting entrance into that Mount Zion. However, it will cost you. It will cost you. You see, we are not, thank God that here we are taught the truth. Yes. Yes. The truth in the sense that if you go to some places, name it and claim it. Go home, believe it and receive it. I don't, fine. <laughs> but they've left out the, the, the fundamental practicals. That just as D-Day is coming, just as that test day is coming, the day physically here on this earth will come for you and for me. And may God help us to have a purpose. Amen. You see, if you have any other option, when those tests, when those trying times come, maybe yours is you have been waiting on God. And you have been waiting. And you have been waiting. And you have been I have waited still some more. And the devil is preaching a different sermon to you. Brother, sister, please, this morning, rekindle your purpose. Refocus. Refocus. You see, remember what we said. Those looks multitude, aimless, goalless. Egypt was always on their mind. You see, is it not very strange? It took one day for God to take them out of Egypt. <laughs> but it's like it took over 40 years for Egypt to get out of them. Do you understand what I say? Yes. 
God took them out of Egypt one day. But for Egypt to come out of them, can you see that we're, we're on a serious business? When you are saved, don't think that because you're saved, then you've got business to do. You need to get down on your knees and tell God, God, all those Egypt that I've been coming with, all those habits, all those tendencies, all those styles of whatever it is, talking, walking, whatever. Jesus, with your precious blood, destroy it. Remove it. If you allow any one of them to remain, you're in danger, big danger. They did not make it. In fact, not they did not. They could not. Any issue? Ah! You brought us out to the wilderness to kill us and our children. Is this not what we told you? Leave us in Egypt. We were eating our bread to the full. We were enjoying our leeks and garlic and onion. Really? We laugh, but you know that the devil plays the same trick today. He will tell you the reason why you're suffering is because you're on this way. After all, when you are in sin, when you are doing it your own way, you did not suffer like this. <laughs> but he did not tell. He's not telling you what you were suffering from. All right. Were they really enjoying bread and garlic and onions? Whipped and lashed by the taskmasters, kicked and whatever by any time. Don't ever forget what God delivered you from. Otherwise, when the devil preaches his sermon, you might just believe it. May God help us. Worldliness and the world, all those traits, may God destroy them and remove them from us. There is no business for it. Someone who is focused, you're focused on Mount Zion, and you're comparing yourself with who? Hold on. You want to tell me that somebody like Prince William is going to be complaining in his mind because mom and dad don't allow me to hang out on the street corners with the other guys. Does that make sense? Hang out on the street corner, a whole prince. He has no business with that. He's on a far higher level. Do you know what level God has taken you? And where God is yet still taking you? Don't belittle yourself. You are important to Jesus. Amen. You are a child of the king. Amen. When you were saved, you don't know what transaction that was? God took you <clears throat> from death and placed you into life. God used the blood of Jesus Christ, his only begotten son, to wash you clean. Why do you think everybody is chasing you? Young people, don't get tricked. Yeah, 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 yeah. I had the same experience. When I was chasing them before salvation, they were all running away. Now I'm a child of God. Oh, hello, Godwin. Hello, hello, hello. Oh, yeah? Young people, the world know what, the world know your quality. Don't, don't, don't undermine yourself. God is giving you, you're the son you're the daughter of the king of kings. Yeah. Don't you understand that? Don't you understand that? If you understand that, you know what? There's even a confidence that comes with knowing who you are. The devil comes to try and harass you. You tell it to clear off. Amen. Amen. Who are you? Because you know who you are. Amen. <laughs> Do you have a purpose? Is heaven your goal? Is heaven your goal? Mount Zion, is that your goal? Anything short of that being your goal, you will not make it. But by the special grace of God, you will make it. Jesus will help you. We're marching to Zion. Join us. The altars of prayers are open.
Heavenly Father, we thank you. Thank you for the vision of heaven. Thank you for the desire to get to Zion. Thank you for your love who prepared us to get to Zion. Keep our focus shining, O Lord. Remove all blurs. Bless us today and make us a blessing. In Jesus' name we pray.